Welcome back to another solo camping adventure. I filmed this back in March. I can't even remember. Anyway, I uh, went for a little solo camping trip just outside Halifax. And as you can see here, I'm pulling a toboggan with the majority of my gear. Uh, I think this is what toboggans were originally invented for and it's doing a pretty good job. As you can see, I'm going near Fox Lake. Now you probably also noticed that the sound there was pretty horrible. Uh, this was a bit of a learning experience. I put my GoPro in a waterproof case because it was kind of a warm, wet kind of a snowy day. And uh, I didn't realize that that completely blocked the microphone. And uh, so the sound for pretty much this whole trip is pure garbage. Uh, so most of this is going to be voiceover. You can see the toboggan uh, doing a pretty pretty good job on the corners. It's a bit of a skill uh, navigating the ups and downs. Uh, as you know, a toboggan wants to go downhill. And uh, if you're between it and that the downside of the hill, it will run you over. Once you get the hang of it, it's a pretty good way to move your gear around in the winter. Definitely beats putting it on your back. Some of these uh, steep hills were a bit of a challenge though. But worth it when you get to the top and there's a beautiful view. This hill coming up here was particularly challenging. I cut out most of the footage just because it was so shaky. <laughs> but here's the end of it. There's the view. And that's Fox Lake. Trying to find a spot to camp, and, uh, and I'm really seeing why the snowshoe was invented. Yeah, indeed. Shortly before trying to talk to the camera there with the terrible sound, I uh, stepped off of, I think, like a four foot drop off without realizing it. Um, it's a very rocky area. Yeah, I thought it was just level ground, gentle slope, and I was, suddenly I was like hip deep in snow with one leg and it took me a couple minutes to get out. This area is pretty tricky if you're not on an actual path. Um, and so yeah, I was just saying there in that little clip how I realized why the snowshoe was invented and regretting that I hadn't picked up some snowshoes before this trip. So you can see here that I'm very cautiously checking for low spots, probably being a little paranoid, to be honest, but um, there are weird cracks between the rocks. And when I set out for this camping trip, I had a vision of building a kind of lean-to shelter against a low rock cliff like this. So when I found this spot, I immediately knew that that's where I was gonna camp. The funny thing is that as the plan evolved, I ended up putting half of that snow back there and putting the toboggan on it upside down as a little bench. So there was a lot of Shoveling for no reason.
you're going to get into kind of wild camping and bushcraft type stuff, learning your just a couple of basic lashings is uh, totally essential. That and the uh, easy version of the trucker's hitch. This trip was actually full of uh, little frustrations and annoyances and backtracking and repeated steps. For example, I tied this tarp up top way too far back and now it's completely useless. So up I go to retie all three connections much looser. But in the end, it's worth going back and doing it right. Now, I don't know anyone that sits in a hammock for the first time and trusts it. You're always a little skeptical on that first sag, but it seems to be all right. Be careful though. <laughs> Gotta keep that momentum going. Don't want to just mammal out too hard. I guess reptiles also like to just lie down and do nothing, but. And you can see why I wanted to keep the momentum on. It's already getting dark. Fire These fire starters are great. I make them with old egg cartons and dryer lint. And then you just melt down a bunch of old candle stubs and pour it over them. And uh, they're just perfect for getting a fire going if you don't want to collect enough twigs to do it the natural way. This area was full of a lot of standing dead hardwood. And uh, so most of this firewood is super dry, really ideal. Yeah, listen to that. Perfect indeed. to get some of the straggler leaves off so you get just the nice inside fresh ones and then cut a little X in the bottom of the stem that allows it to cook more thoroughly at the same speed of course getting your 
Brussels sprouts to cook evenly is fine, uh, as long as you don't completely overcook them like I did. Also, this steak on top of the pot was a bit of an experiment. Um, I guess I kind of halfway forgot that the pot was full of ice and probably wouldn't get that hot. So this wasn't an ideal way to cook the steaks that I brought. And here I'm trying to make a spatula. But it uh, turns out I was carving a piece of oak and uh, it was really hard to get it to whittle down nicely. As you can see though, the steak is cooking. I did have to sort of dangle it off the sides just a little bit. And along with the Brussels sprouts, we've got some tortellini. Tortellini. And this is what you do if you don't have a strainer. <laughs> one by one. So in the end, we've got Brussels sprouts, tortellini, cut up steak, and garlic all fried together. And then I put on this actually, I think, kind of expired uh, Alfredo sauce. And, uh, yeah, you can see me testing it there. It didn't taste good. It tasted slightly off, but I was hungry and I took a gamble and I was okay. <laughs> but, uh, not, not the smartest move, honestly. I probably should have just eaten these, uh, with no sauce. In the end, it was palatable, a solid 4 out of 10, and there was so much of it, uh, I actually couldn't finish it in my first sitting. I had plans to go and get firewood there. You can see I'm getting ready, getting my gloves on, and then... <laughs> Now, since I'm sleeping in a, basically a summer beach hammock in the winter, I thought it would be good to do the old hot water bottle trick. I might have melted this bottle a little bit, to be honest. I probably should have let that water cool down. But anyway, great way to warm up the sleeping bag and stay warm for the first half of the night anyway. I realized at some point that I actually forgot to bring my second uh, set of thermal uh, base layer and that mine was pretty much soaked from the knee down. So you can see me here trying to roast out my legs here a little bit. Of course it doesn't show up on camera but my legs are steaming like crazy here. And then I wanted to try something here. Usually when you just uh, let a fire go, it burns out pretty quickly and around somewhere around 2 a.m. you realize it's totally out and you're freezing um, if you were relying on the heat of the fire. So I wanted to just kind of put a pause on the fire, throw a bunch of snow on it, and uh, not enough to completely kill it, but enough to like delay it by a few hours. Because uh, I figured once the snow all melted off and, and burnt off, there was enough fuel on there still that it would uh, come back to life and then maybe it wouldn't be totally dead until much later in the night. This is my attempt at a time lapse. I don't know how long it lasted, um, but you can see the snow kind of melting away there. Pretty comfortably. Um, you know, woke up, saw the sky 
I was getting light. Uh, oh wow! Here we go. It's, uh, must be getting to be almost time to get up. And, uh, fire was still burning. Oh, that's great. My snow trick worked, I guess. Um, I turned on my phone and checked the time, and it was 1:30 a.m. I went back, back into my sleeping bag. But Actually, the fire completely burnt out, and uh, got a little bit chilly. Um, I don't know. This sleeping bag is really—it's really small. And it's really narrow, so so I got wearing my jacket to bed. And, uh, it was all right, but get a little bit chilly. Anyway. Yep. If you don't sleep well, it is hard to focus and be aware of what you're doing. And being out in the middle of nowhere kind of demands that you be aware of your surroundings. Just got to slow down. Realize I never quite showed how my shelter worked. I've got that uh, sort of A-frame made kind of a ridge line and then tied the hammock to the top of the A-frame and the tree at the other end. Be honest, this oatmeal tasted like plain oatmeal with no salt or sugar. And uh, yeah, it was not very good, but got the job done. This might be what is often referred to as type 2 fun, where it's a bit of a struggle. You may not love every moment of it, but looking back is uh, 
it's fond. It's another great example of <laughs> frustration and struggle and annoyance of not operating at your best. There's always the question when these moments happen of whether you'll include it in the video or whether you try and edit it out to look like you know what you're doing. Even though it might be type two fun, there is a reward of pushing through. And this moment captures it perfectly. After a while, the perpetual blundering and failure, uh, it becomes entertaining. You kind of break through and there's a, usually a moment when you start to laugh at stuff instead of getting mad. And to me, that's what it's all about. It's not just looking back. It's about kind of cracking through that surface of frustration and taking pleasure in the struggle in the moment. Now, I could have sworn there was a path that I saw, and that was not it. This, this is it. There we go. Much easier. And if you look carefully, you can see my ice spike fall off my boot right there. Oops. Here comes that extra steep part again. Let the toboggan go first. <laughs> Lessons learned. I think next time I would tie a rope on the back as well. Or just ride it. Hmm. Thank you.